Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, welcome back to Frontier Pilot Simulator, a simulator game that I thoroughly enjoy as we fly around on a certain planet, somewhere out there in space, uh, instead of it being like Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky, we're transporting cargo with these gargantuan ships on a planet, uh, whether it's research or food or uh, batteries, that type of thing, all sorts of cool things to pick up and deliver in Frontier Pilot Simulator. There's been an update, uh, a few updates I should say, to graphics and also to the economy, so credits and other things in the game work much differently, and so I'm happy you're all back. If you want to see more, you know what to do. Support the channel, click or tap that like button. Most people don't, but those of you who do, I greatly appreciate. Helps me go. It's um, a fuel, so I appreciate all of you for topping off that tank. Thank you very much as always. I'm going to be playing with the Thrustmaster T1600. Uh, I guess it's a more advanced uh, throttle. Like It has a lot more buttons on it and such, and there seems to be an auto setup to it. So I've completed that. My um, flying is not good in the game to begin with, but it's going to be absolutely atrocious, painful to watch, cringe YouTuber, as uh, I try to, uh, I guess, learn how to fly again in a whole new joystick. Imagine driving your car but then you're driving the same car, but now it has a whole different interior. Like, instead of the uh, transmission being in the center console, it's now mounted to the ceiling, and the steering wheel is upside down, and in fact, is a square now. That's what it's like when you fly with a new joystick. So we'll see how it is. I'm flying a new uh, joystick in a new update to the game. Turned all the graphics onto beautiful, and it should look good. Uh, the game is sponsored, by the way, by the developers of Frontier Pilot Simulator, today's video. So thanks to them for their support. Oh, right, we got to turn all this back down here. There we go. Hopefully we don't get rolling yet. All right, one thing I really like about this game, though, is that the uh, landscape is very, very beautiful and is really unique that there's, like, mining going on on this planet, and there's different, uh, different types of, like... Uh, atmospheres, I guess you could say, or biomes, I guess would be the technical term. Like, for example, this is kind of like a desert, and then where you initially start looks like Iceland or Norway or Scandinavia, some some random place like that. It looks like the beginning of Death Stranding. But one thing I really like in this game is that we can actually take off. So if I hit this button here, we become a plane. Usually you take off in VTOL mode, which makes you like a helicopter or an Osprey, where you take off vertically, VTOL standing for vertical takeoff and landing. And uh, this one we can actually take off from what seems to be like a crawling aircraft carrier. This actually is, uh, I wanted to show you the bottom here, but uh, it's, it's basically like a giant, um, I don't know, it's like a giant tank. There's giant treads, huge, huge treads underneath this vehicle, and it can move around. And it's like a mobile refinery. You can see the buildings down there actually refining ore. So let's see how we can do in takeoff. It's been a long time since I played. We're probably going to crash. There's new controls such as flaps and whatnot. But uh, we'll just see how it is on our initial takeoff. So let's go ahead and give her full throttle and see if we can take off. And we'll go fly around a little bit and just kind of take a look at what's new and uh, see how we go. All right. So let's see. Everything's feeling good so far. Wow, that's really close to the uh, really close to the uh, thingy there. The uh, the tower. Here we go. All right. So there's been a lot of new and graphical improvements. That was actually a pretty good takeoff. Applause to myself on that one. And let's see if these two controls work the same. Nope, okay. I was just seeing if the joystick, uh, in most games you can actually turn the joystick like I am now to try to use the uh, yaw a little bit. But we can also use pitch and roll and stuff to turn so it does handle like a regular aircraft. So we probably want to slow down a little bit and uh, maybe execute some sort of a turn here. We're going to fly around randomly. No real objectives or anything today. I just want to see how the game looks and feels now that they've done some also physics ups updates to the game. So there's changes to flaps as I mentioned, and uh, a few things that uh, change with wind resistance. I believe the atmosphere of this planet is a little different than Earth, too, so it doesn't handle like a normal aircraft would. So I'm just going to try to see how long we can fly for. Apparently we got about uh, seven minutes of battery to kind of mosey around. So you can see the battery in the lower left corner of the screen at about 8,200 right about now. And uh, over on the uh, in the middle of the screen, at the very top where it says 107, I believe that's the meters we are above the ground, you can actually see the timer going down from 7 minutes, uh, 38 seconds, 6.5. It all depends on kind of our use of the battery. So there's no real, like, fuel, even though it looks like a giant amount of flame coming out of the back of the plane. It's actually a very re uh, relaxing game, I must say, and it makes me excited for Flight Simulator and other games coming up. Let's see how it looks now. I believe there's also a first-person mode to the game, too. Uh, though I can't remember how to get into the cockpit from here. Let me just hit some random buttons. Good idea, right, when I don't know what I'm doing? Let's just see if we can get inside the aircraft and uh, take a look from first-person mode. And it uh, looks like we got steering flaps that are online. Our aircraft also takes damage as we fly, 
as the atmosphere of this planet is not very forgiving, but cargo still needs to be transported from uh, location to location, so apparently I can't control my camera anymore. That's a little concerning here. Oh, and apparently we're breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> What's going on here? We're traveling at uh, 217 meters. Oh, there we are. We went into VTOL mode now. Let's go ahead and set her down. Let's see if we can land anywhere. Let's see how a landing works, especially in rough terrain. Luckily in this game, the landing gear is automatic, so you won't need to press any buttons like that. But on occasion, you will be tasked with going out and rescuing pilots or picking up cargo uh, from the uh, surface of the planet or and things like that. Let's see if we can give her a little thrust there. We don't want to hit too hard. Oh, it looks like there's a little alignment screen there. This is going to be a rough landing. Oof, that was, that was a little more rough than I was hoping, but at least we uh, stuck the landing there, so good job. Seems like the... Oh, it automatically... Uh, oh, that's really nice. It actually automatically stops you, too, if you're rolling forward, bringing you to a stop. Okay. Well, that was a good landing, I think, just at random. And let me see if I can look around a little bit. Well, I've got the controls here to do all sorts of different things. Wow, I can actually uh, control myself in a VTOL mode that way. That's really neat. So let's deploy our wings again and see how it works. When... Okay. So it's only for VTOL mode that it adjusts the thrusters like that. Okay. So let's see if we can go into first-person mode. I can't quite remember what the button is when we're in... Uh, oh, that didn't sound good. When we're in uh, first-person mode, it's a little easier to fly. Oh, that's cool. That removes the HUD, if you'd like. Self-destruct button. Certainly don't want to hold that one for too long. And then, of course, uh, the ability to load and unload. There's uh, three different types of craft in this game, too. Uh, there's a small, medium, and large one. Here's our map now of the planet that we're on. So this is kind of a square island. It's uh, shaped kind of like a, a giant sea, as you can see. Uh -huh. And then there's a small island here where the quarry is. There's an initial tutorial island all the way over here that you need to fly to or fly from. So when you first start, as you may have seen before on the channel, uh, we have we started with a very small craft making short uh, distance deliveries. But we can do like these long international flights to a small island here for repair and then eventually get over to the large island. I don't know if there's more territory to explore. I guess we'll kind of have to peek around and see if they've added anything new, but it probably will be a future update to the game, so that looks good. All right, I want to see cockpit mode now. Oh, we can actually make markers, too. That's helpful. All right, let's check the uh, mini-map here. Apparently I had zero dollars, too. Ah, yes, and there's ability to see wind flow as well. So turbulence and wind are very important in this game. It can really make a, a rough takeoff and landing. Let me check my controls quick and see what can be controlled this way. And uh, let's see if... Oh, interfaces might be it. Uh, let's see, inter interface navigation, scaling the map, actions one and two. Essentially, all I want to do is go into uh, first-person mode, so let's see if there's a button for that. Oh, wow, we can actually drop fuel if we need to. That's interesting. I thought the game used batteries, not fuel. Maybe it, maybe you can actually dump fuel. That's kind of cool. There's our flat position, so base button 12, or rather we have to set that. Uh, that's uh, self-destruct mode, so a lot of cool things to do. Uh, a lot of you have seen me deliver basic cargo and whatnot, and I just kind of want to look around and see what's different and see if uh, things have improved. And it certainly looks like they've made a step in the right direction by making everything look more beautiful. And, uh, well, of course, when you're dealing with a game with the name uh, Simulator in it, it's very important in order to uh, yeah do that. All right, so there you go. The Thrustmaster 16000M is what we're using. So it automatically calibrated, so that's good. Very plug-and-play. That's delightful. There's our wind... Uh, display right there. Flying mode switch is what I was doing in order to deploy uh, the uh, flaps, or rather the, the wings, in order to go into either VTOL mode or flying mode. So that's important, very important to, to keep track of. Uh, camera location. Oh, here we are. Uh, move camera forward in cockpit. Well, that's not what I want yet. Ah, camera posi positions. That's the bracket keys. So it doesn't seem like it might be assigned to that, but let's try this. Oh, there we go. So we got a camera that goes under each wing, and then we've got our... Uh, cockpit mode too. Oh, there we go. Well, that's interesting. You get multiple cockpit modes. You get the transparent cockpit for landing and takeoff. Then you've got the camera mounted on the nose, and then you've got the true cockpit, which is here. All right, let's do a little takeoff and landing from this, but first let's kind of take a peek around and see how the controls... Does, does it actually animate any sort of the... Okay, so there's no animations to the uh, to the pilot yet, but I assume that'll come sometime in the future showing him pressing buttons and pulling the throttle back and forth. I believe all the cockpits might be the same at this moment, but it's kind of cool they give you a camera on the side to show the surroundings of the craft so you know what, whether or not you're clear of a lamppost or something like that for takeoff. So let's continue now and uh, 
first person mode or cockpit mode and see what we got here. Kind of neat how it displays it on the HUD rather than having to look around at the controls, but it would be nice for a fully immersive experience to be able to see all that stuff on a uh, on a console rather than on a, a heads-up display. All right, let's get up to the top here of these mountains. Now, I believe when we switch, we need to be moving forward a little bit. So I'm going to try to give us some forward momentum and then switch in wing mode now. Camera automatically uh, backs out a little bit. And we're losing altitude pretty rapidly. Uh, seems like a system may have malfunctioned. Oh, seems like we finally got thrust. Maybe it didn't malfunction, that was just the wings taking time to deploy. And it looks like we've got forward thrust. Finally, we're moving We're moving forward with a lot of good speed. All right, now if I use the, um, let me see if I use this little thing here, if I can look around. No, there's a, a little button you can use in order to scroll the camera, but it might not be working inside the cockpit at the moment. But this view is very helpful to see where the wind is going. So if you go with the wind, you can plan your routes to be more fuel efficient, which is certainly helpful. I want to see if we can plot a course now to an aircraft carrier and try to make a landing. So if I press M, it seems like it's not bringing up the map mode. Uh, so do you have to do that from another... Well, let's try to land at one of these locations here. It does bring up some uh, locations that are... Uh, this one's about 24 meters away from us. Looks like there's a research center to our left. The Orient Research Center, so we'll go to that and see if we can drop by there. Certainly used a lot of fuel in takeoff and landing, so it's definitely not a good idea to just land willy-nilly if you <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. All right, so we'll see if we can hover over here a little bit. Some of these uh, locations actually have full-scale runways where you can take off and land, which is super cool. I don't think I've successfully landed on a runway yet. I'm a little too afraid to do that, but practice would make perfect on that. The uh, research center did seem like it was over here somewhere. Let's pull back on that throttle. This Thrustmaster throttle is a little tight. I'm hoping that with more use, it'll become a little looser and will be a little bit more responsive. If you've ever bought in a new car before that has a uh, uh, a clutch, you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It takes a little while for the clutch to kind of feel a little bit more, uh, you know, responsive. Now we've got about 2 minutes, 20 seconds. If I see the base, it's probably going to be in those cliffs. It might be a little too late for us to turn, but I do see the volcano on the nose. So landing in a volcano would be pretty badass and very Star Wars of us. Imagine having your house built into a volcano. At least your heating bills would be low, but your cooling would probably be off the charts, honestly. All right, well, let's slow her down and take a look at the volcano. If we fly over this, we will take damage. So we can only kind of do a drive-by. Wow, it's actually shooting out all sorts of uh, debris. So there is a possibility for us to get damaged if we get too close. Well, that's pretty neat to see. All right, we are going to have to pick up the speed here and get up over this mountain. And it uh, looks like the volcano is marked at two point, or rather just two kilometers away. I can't see anything. We're going into the wall, baby. That's it for us. That is ripping a GG. Oh, what the hell? Our uh, engines seem to have shut down ahead of time. Now, when you crash, I, I had assumed that I would end up hitting a mountain at some point. Actually, I honestly thought I'd go into the ocean. But when you do crash, uh, your cockpit essentially just uh, evacs and you get a new uh, ship for free as the game is kind of still in development phase, but you go into autopilot like this. I am noticing some lag in the game from time to time. And again, we're here just to kind of see what features are new. I'm not planning to be an elite delivery pilot just yet. I have a lot more practice to go before I get to that center. But I am seeing some lag every maybe 10 seconds. The game seems to freeze no matter what you're doing and kind of load. I don't know if it's trying to load the map around it, but uh, anyway. So what's our next destination? Is it going to seriously take us a minute and 55 seconds to get there? Looks like we're going to, quote, the big crater. I don't think I can see inside this cockpit at all. Oh, there it goes. We can actually see. Oh, we can. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I did not know this. The emergency um, evacuation shuttle or whatever um, seems to be our typical cockpit, but it just puts a canopy around us to protect us. So it's all autopilot now. That's pretty neat that it does that. And it does show us the acceleration and everything else on the upper left side. So it is going into autopilot mode, but... Uh, it'll deliver us back to where we can get another ship, which is totally fine. I really like taking off from those giant aircraft carriers and research facilities that have runways. I want more practice with what, do I, what I was flying earlier was the biggest ship in the game, at least that I'm aware of right now, uh, which is like a, a whale. And that's what it uh, means. It's like it's a giant whale. There's also the ox and the scarab. They're medium and small size. 
And as you see, we get another ship, so not a problem. Not the end of the world. Very, very cool. Um, I think we have some upgrades with us as well, which are pretty neat. So that's certainly helpful for what we're trying to do. You can see here our horsepower and all the other things that uh, provide thrust and forward movement. The wheels actually uh, propel forward on their own, too. So if you want to uh, move to the runway without using your thrusters because they're a little aggressive, you can just use the uh, motors and the tires, which is pretty cool. Now let's take a look at other ships here. I wonder if we have uh, ships at our disposal. I'll skip to the purchase. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see if we can check out some other ships here. All right, so there's the Scarab as well, which is the super small one. This is the large size one, so we'll have to uh, get one of these. So let's switch over to the... Uh, all right, maybe it's the Ox. Maybe I'm mistaken here. This is the Ox and the Scarab. Those are the other two sizes, so those are the, the two smaller ones just below uh, the current size which is the uh, whale, essentially. I think it's Spanish. So there we go. We get another one essentially for free, or at least at a gargantuan discount. This is new. That camera angle inside the hangar is definitely new and cool. I do like that. Now let's see if we can move. Okay, you can move at minimal thrust if you if you use the... Um, let's see, if I knock down the throttle to zero, I can still move the joystick in order to provide a little bit of thrust forward to the runway, which in this case is a uh, just a, a takeoff pad, like a landing pad, I guess. And let's see if there's a runway around here. So this is the... I think this maybe was the research base I was trying to go before, but we got off course quite a bit. But that's okay. So let's see if we can taxi forward. I don't know if you could do this before, but the joystick I was using previously in other episodes had a lot less... Uh, um, what would you say? Options to it. Didn't have as many buttons. Didn't feel as sensitive. It was a different Thrustmaster controller. Uh, meant for like a crossover to PlayStation 4 or whatnot. So this joystick, if you're trying to get into more games that are about space delivery and whatnot, uh, this is certainly a good one to get into. Again, if you want a break from Elite Dangerous but still like those types of games, this is very much No Man's Sky Elite Dangerous, except just on one planet, which I think is pretty cool that the, the planet's detailed enough that you can actually deliver stuff. Uh, like, for example, this is a quarry, I believe. So we can deliver... You can see all sorts of things that they're mining. You can deliver different types of... Uh, things from here and there. Uh, the only complaint that I have in the game is that we have to like turn around in order to be loaded up. So you see how the outline underneath our craft is white and shows that we need to load that way. You see the little crane there and the uh, section up there with the A, B, C, D. That's where cargo is waiting and then can be loaded into our craft. And it does greatly affect your ability to fly too. So you need to make sure you've got the right setup and the right aircraft in order to um, transport stuff around. So let's give it a little boost. I really just honestly like flying in this game. It would be nice if there was one more craft that was really meant for passengers luxury-wise. They do have, like I mentioned, the, the Scarab and like the other ones, but it'd be kind of cool if there were a luxury craft, though I must say that this game is meant to be more industrial, like colonization, so the whole uh, commercial market doesn't truly exist yet. It's all kind of for industrial and military and research purposes. So let's fly around a little bit in VTOL mode see how that functions and I want to show you third person a little bit more too because I think it's really cool to see the craft actually function with the flaps and the leaning and the and the uh, the engines and everything like that so let's see if we can uh oh I thought I had a lot more thrust than that let's try to zoom out here over them there we go that's what I want to do perfect be really cool if there was major cities on this map too again it's it's a, a planet being colonized so it's not really uh it's not really fully functioning yet, but there are flying spaceships that you can land on, flying aircraft carriers to bring cargo to, and also uh, oil rig-shaped things that do fishing. They're, it's kind of like landing on an oil rig. So let's kind of fly around at random and see what we see. We'll uh, put her into, obviously, the more fuel-efficient mode is the uh, flying mode, so let's give that a shot. We'll lose a little bit of altitude as we pick up speed, but it's not too hefty, too bad. Another cool mission type would be to, uh, imagine if we could, like, paradrop stuff out the back of the, uh, aircraft. That'd be really cool. Oh, imagine, like, a military, uh, aspect to the game, too, where, like, you get to drop troops off and they jump out the back and land into positions and things like that. That'd be really neat. But anyway, I think we're over the ocean now for the, uh, for the island, so we gotta kinda stay near, stay near, uh, the main section. Let's pick her up a little bit, too. Looks like that camera comes on if you're dipping down a little too low. That's neat. Let's you know, hey, there's a little danger, and here's where it is. So that's helpful. 
Really like the look and design of aircraft in this game. I really like how everything flies, and I like the idea of the missions. Before, it was a little tedious planning out uh, routes and things, because obviously the most effective way to pick up cargo is to go from point A to point B and taking multiple cargo if you have to. So, if, for example, point C wants waters and water and batteries, and point A and point B both have one has water and the other has batteries, it's a good idea to go A, B, C, so that way you can bring everything to the last destination. But sometimes it was a little difficult to plan routes. and uh, But that was long ago. It's much more easy to do. And I've seen some very beautiful screenshots of this game, too, of people taking pictures of themselves in front of other planets and such. But it looks good. I uh, wonder if the inside has uh, water showing up on the, on the glass. No, it doesn't. I don't even know if this is actually glass that we can see out of. There's a very beautiful planet there. I forget exactly where we are, but it's somewhere... I think it's in the Milky Way galaxy. But uh, I think the uh, projection that we see of the outside is just from computers. I don't think it's a glass canopy. I think we're actually just seeing it being projected on the inside by uh, cameras or whatnot. Let's try to go in for a decent landing this time. I would like to master... I've seen the developers and a few other people land these things, and it, uh, it is not easy. They do an incredible job. That is, that is a difficult job. Uh, it, is, it is very difficult to land these things on a runway. So let's try to do VTOL. I'm going to try to back out a little bit here and see if we can just land down there. We are a big boy. Look at this thing coming in on this... What looks to be a coastal... Like a wind array. Looks like a... Looks like a solar plant or something like that. Looks like they might be uh, having batteries and stuff here for us to pick up. So there's probably more than certainly a job here. Let's try to land the way they want us to, if we can. And we are coming in hot. Let's pick it up a little bit there. Obviously some wind and such blowing, as you saw earlier. Lots of green arrows that point in all sorts of different directions. The wind is very aggressive and points many different ways in this game. So it can be a little tedious to fly. But don't let that scare you. I think this game might be best uh, with a controller, but a uh, flight stick and throttle just feels the feels the most authentic. Oh, look at those wind flaps popping up for air brakes. That's beautiful. All right, well, let's set her down before I biff it. Oh, that is a very nice landing. Oh, never mind. I got a... I got celebrating a little too early there. I thought we were about to touch down. Just trying to keep it under... Ooh, it is getting windy. There we go. That was that was much easier. Okay, not too bad. And then we can just cut the engines and back her into place. Woo. Yeah, look at all that wind blowing through. I can see the, the vapors and everything. So if you are off a little bit, you kind of just back it in with the joystick, which is really weird. Imagine driving a car with a joystick. And let's see what we can pick up here. And we also need to get some more uh, charge. A little bit more battery on the vehicle. There we go. Okay, I think we need to back up just a hair, and then we're good. Should turn green when we're in position, although it can be a little difficult to, uh, you know, park a... <laughs> Essentially, this is like an office building that you're flying with a bunch of thrusters on it. Do we go forward a little bit? I think we need to be mostly in the yellow circle, but the silhouette, the white silhouette needs to turn green in order for us to know that we've completed our landing. So we're now executing a uh, four-point turn. Over there, you see... That little green square over there on the other side of the platform, you can see that there's passengers waiting too. So sometimes when you're getting cargo, you, you sometimes can do a uh, side job for a passenger as well where they might want to uh, come with on a detour. Like they need to go almost to the exact position that you're going to, but you might need to stop somewhere else for them. A little pit stop in order to appease a passenger. And sometimes they're very important. Wow, maybe I need to be more forward. It's been a while since I parked one of these bad boys, but I really want to land on a runway, and uh, I'll need some practice for that, I think, because uh, coming in at the perfect angle and worrying about wind resistance and everything like that is just going to be an absolute nightmare. Jeez, I can't get this thing in here at all. Well, actually, I forgot. We have our camera over there on the right side, so let me try that. I think I'm... Like, this should be good right here. From all my experience of playing the game, you don't have to be spot on, but right there should be, like, within... Uh, the parameters of the game. Any more reverse and I'm going to fall off the platform, so let's try to go forward just a little bit more. This is really, uh, this outline here is more for the uh, aux, the medium-sized craft, but maybe it doesn't turn green anymore. Let me see if I can just hit enter and... no? Interesting. The game is still an alpha version, so there's a lot more to be added in the future, 
So I'm hoping, you know, it'd be really nice is if these platforms uh, just rotated and would point you in the right direction. So if you had to land in reverse for whatever reason, that the platform would just, uh, you know, do a 360 degree or, uh, you know, 180 or 90 degrees, how, however much you had to turn in order to do it. Looks like it's not accepting us here. Maybe it has something to do with, uh, I don't know, maybe it's not unlocking it or something. It should, it, all platforms and everything should be open. But anyway, that's about as much as I want to fiddle with that for now. Uh, but I will need to get a new battery here, so let's see if I can try to get it to open. It should pop up if there's something. Oh, this is kind of just frustrating at this point. Try to do that and see if it triggers it to do something else. That's eh, my mistake. I'm not parked perfectly, but also there's a little give uh, leeway to it as well. There's a passenger there. I don't know where exactly he wants to go, but let's take a look at the map and see where we ended up now. So we are at the, quote, big crater. So we ended up in the middle of the map. So there's a large uh, research site here, I'm assuming, to where a uh, large crater appeared from a probably a giant uh, meteorite that crashed into the planet and then created this huge, like, uh, island, basically. That's interesting. Uh, this is a power center, I think, yeah. They have batteries that are available in order to uh, bring elsewhere. And there's a passenger here, too. So if we're picking cargo, we can fly, for example, with the G-type batteries here. And then I think if you hover over it, it'll show you... If you click and hover over it, I think... Well, when you're connected to the cargo, it'll show you exactly where the, where it needs to be delivered, like what local places require that uh, type of stuff. Otherwise, you can find it manually. So on the left side, you'll see what they, what they definitely want. So uh, things highlighted in yellow... Uh, I believe are areas like biome wise but areas in white for example the uh, mine here is is uh, an actual structure so necessary items so anything that requires batteries we can deliver to if we can connect there's also search areas here like I was mentioning earlier if there's a craft that goes down um, you can go out and find the pilot I believe or recover the craft or a black box or whatever they need wow there's really uh, insufficient amount of buildings around here I wonder why a lot of them seem to have disappeared. I don't know why. I remember a lot more buildings out here. Looks like nobody really wants batteries, do they? Ah, here we are. G-type batteries. So these guys will buy these for 22000 So we can buy these here for 1500 and then deliver them for a profit of 22000 And I think we can pick up more than one. So here at the um, solar farm or wind farm or whatever it is, it's a power center. We can pick those up, fly them across, and in order to do this, it's probably going to be a little longer than what our batteries can do, so we can stop halfway between at the hard mine, for example. It'd be nice, actually, to get some more detail about these centers. It would be nice if we clicked on those. A word to the de devs, it'd be nice to, uh, you know, show whether or not there was a runway there, you know, like what the conditions were like. So if you clicked on a, a hard mine, it would be nice if there was like an arrow that showed you which way the runway was best to come in so you could plan your route. So for example, if the runway here was like uh, southeast uh, by northwest like this, then you'd know, oh, I should plan, plan a route to come in from here and then slow around down and then land. You know, so you can actually plan a, a flight plan or come in via VTOL. So that'd be a nice thing in the future. I'd love to see that, including more craft. That'd be super nice. Another cool thing too is if you plan routes, I believe it will tell you um, when you do have cargo, whether or not you can make it battery-wise. So I think if the uh, line is gray like this, it shows that you don't really have the energy to go there. As you can see here at light blue, that's about as far as we're going to get after takeoff to go that far. So we're going to have to be uh, really cautious about that. So I'd like to do that job, actually. I'd like to fly from our power center that we're at now, land at the hard mine, preferably like a runway, and then go over to the uh, Zephyr, which I believe is a ship. So it's a moving... Uh, vessel. I believe I believe it's a vessel, and then we can land on it and pick up uh, canned coxcomb and calobee and all other sorts of stuff. That's a type of fish that they're uh, harvesting on the planet for food. So we can actually pick up fish and bring it somewhere else as a second job to really like uh, complete everything. So I think it's a really interesting game. I like the fact that we're on a a planet rather than like in a solar system, which just kind of makes it feel a little more uh, legitimate, for lack of a better word, I guess. Oh, oh, there it goes. It was turning yellow there. All I had to do was stop. So let's try to charge our batteries now. Apparently it was a little irritated with me, but now it uh, should be good. So if we stop, there it is. Perfect. All right, so let's try to enter this now. So we can recharge our batteries and then load with G-type batteries. So let's do that. So I'll just use the keyboard for this, but I'm sure you can do it with the, uh, do it with the joystick. There we go. So now we're fully charged with batteries, and let's, let's bring our own battery. 
Oh, unfortunately, we're out of money for whatever reason. I must have had some sort of a profile that had cash before. Oh, that's a shame. Well, anyway. Oh, and, and that's really cool. Here it goes. Displays a list of places where you can sell the batteries. So it shows you distance and price. Obviously, the further you go, the higher the price. These guys will buy them for 38000 but I think the Zephyr there is probably uh, our best bet. The Zephyr right, right around there. It's like the shortest distance for the least or for the most amount of money. Interesting. I'm, I had a profile before, which is why I have this ship. That had lots of money, so I don't know exactly what happened to that. But we can buy these G-type batteries and then fly them to the destination with the road... Uh, with that uh, pit stop in between. So we'd have to land here and then go to the Zephyr, which would be quite interesting. I like that a lot. All right, well, let's see what uh, the graphical differences are in the game, too. I want to just kind of see how the what the what the difference is between everything. So this is, uh, I think this is the most beautiful of the settings now. W the ocean actually moves. You can see reflections of the sun uh, and a little bit of the coastline. You can actually see, like, the elevation of the of the... Uh, of the water you can see below looks nice let's go ahead and try to bop it down to low and see what the difference is so when i came in here it was set to moderate and so now there's like a higher level of stuff so let's just turn everything down to moderate and see exactly what the what it used to look like in comparison to now and uh we'll turn everything to like good i think it was up two settings so let's see what it looks like in comparison yeah it looks a little bit better on those higher settings i must say uh, a little bit, when you get to a certain level graphic-wise, the smallest changes can make a big difference if there's a little bit of difference in the shadows. Still looks pretty good, but I'd say the other version is a little bit better. Let's see inside the cockpit if that changes the appearance at all. Love this cockpit mode. Cockpit still seems a little muddy, but I'm assuming there'll be updates to that soon. But the fact that you can play in first person with all the ships is really cool. Although the cockpit, I believe, is the same between all of them. It'd be nice if the bigger ship had the roomier cockpit. You know, you could look around and see maybe like a passenger seat or uh, other seats behind the captain, that kind of thing, or whomever. Very cool. Very, very cool. And then flaps and everything like that. All right, cool. Well, at least we fully charge now. I guess we owe money for the... Cr That's funny. To charge, you can go into debt with charging, but you can't with uh, picking up cargo. So I guess we would be boned in the game if I, if I can't work, like if I can't buy cargo... Then there's no way I can make money, so I, I don't know what to do. But anyway, I love... Oh, that we can see the engine out there. Let's see if I can reverse a little bit and actually see the... Oh, we don't have the engines on. Let's see if we can actually see them fire up. Oh, they do move. Cool. You can see that through the actual uh, window. That's really neat. So if we power up and power down, you can see the differences. Oh, that's cool. It also sounds different as well. That little line there is exactly where we need to be in order to really take off. That's our like our takeoff threshold, so that looks really cool. Love the fact that you can actually see dust coming out of the engines like that. And then if we shut them down, do they fold up? They're at zero. Looks like they're still on, but you can hear them. Cool. All right. Well, anyway, thanks, guys, for joining me here today for yet another look at Frontier Pilot Simulator. It looks beautiful. I just wanted to show off what was updated, which was mostly the physics and the, um, and the, and the graphics to the game. Again, we're looking at the medium graphics, but the way it looked uh, before was much better. But I'd like to see even more. I want to see more detail on these mountains. Maybe more plant life. Of course, I think the planet is supposed to be dead at the most part. It's just supposed to be a husk that still has water and life in the sea. But the, uh, Or maybe it's a new planet that hasn't yet formed an ecosystem above the water line, which is kind of neat. Although there are some islands that are that way. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for leaving a like, too. I'd like to do a full playthrough on this game and actually do some deliveries and such. I'll need to get some cash and whatnot, so I'll probably have to modify the profile in order to just do some jobs. But... That's the most amount of fun to me. So uh, if you guys like the game, make sure you check it out on Steam. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for a lovely comment down below. Glory to Raptoria. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.